a couple parts to machine. A simple part and a not so simple part. But both of these have something in common. They're going to be difficult to hold. Traditional methods aren't going to work with either one of these. So what do we do? Well, let's head over to our DVF 5000 and take a closer look. So here we are at the DN Solutions DVF 5000, which is my go-to machine because it eliminates a lot of setups for me. And something like this, we need to keep it as simple and fast as possible. So let me show you what we're dealing with here. The first machining operation is to put some holes and countersinks on the inside of this part. But the issue is that Trevor has already completed the outside profile on the wire EDM. But that poses a problem for us to try to hold the part because the bottom features have a 120 degree angle instead of something like a 90 that's more common, just like a V-block has. Now what we would like to do is put our part on top of this V-block and use it to support the bottom of our part. Now the problem is the two angles don't match and it's allowed to rock back and forth. Another issue is that the V-block is longer than my part is, so I'd have to put something in between my part and the vise in order for it to clamp on the part and not the V-block itself. Now a lot of people might think that if you only have one part to make, then this issue is not that big of a deal. You could indicate your part in and just run it, see how it goes. But the problem is, wire EDMs take a long time. We've got a lot of time put in this part already. So I think we'd be a lot better off if we go ahead and design a quick, easy fixture and eliminate all the risk right up front. So the solution that I come up with is to make our own simple V-block, except this time we're gonna match the angle that's on the part. So let's take a look in Mastercam and look at our operations and see how this is gonna play out. So here we are in Mastercam and my first operation is to drill these holes and put these countersinks on the inside of the part. Now, if you look here, this is my V-block that I designed. It's got the same angle as our part and this radius is just a little bit smaller than the radius of the part. So if we turn our vice layer on, this is how we're gonna hold the part in the machine. So that's gonna capture that part. I'm not gonna to have to indicate anything and that's gonna take all the risk out of this part. Next, we're gonna to have to stand the part up and put some chamfers on the end of this. Well, this V-block can also help us there in clamping the part and putting even pressure all the way around the part instead of a regular V-block that might scar my part or it might end up distorting the shape. So I think something like this is gonna give us a much better result than a regular V-block would. Now we're gonna jump into SolidWorks and design our own simple V-block. So as you can see here, I've designed this block with the same angle as the angle on their part. I've also made the radius here in the bottom a little bit smaller than the radius of the part to make sure that it doesn't touch first and keep us off of our V profile. I'm also going to extrude this out to a little bit smaller length than our part itself. I come in here and I'm going to put a little bit of a fillet around these edges. And there's Donnie here. He's also not working and doing anything. <laughs> All right, now we're going to come in and lastly put a chamfer. Let's just Put a little edge break around the sides to keep us from cutting ourselves. There's our V-block. It was really quick, easy to design. It doesn't have to be super complicated, and this is going to take all the risk out of our process. And if you have multiple parts to make, this is going to give us peace of mind and keep us from having to indicate every single part. So now if you remember in the intro of this video, we have two fixtures to make. So now that our V-block is finished, let's move on to the second fixture. Now this one's gonna be a lot more complicated than the first one because as you can see, this part is gonna be a lot more difficult to hold. So the first thing you notice is that this part has a ball sticking up and it's also round. Now the work we need to do is on the end of this part, so we need to access all around this part. So we need to stand this part up, but to do so, as you can see, the boss is all up in the way. We also have this cutout here, so if we put a V-block behind this in order to hold on this round shaft, it's not going to hold very well. We also could lay it on its side and maybe put a V-block on each side of this, but we know that our table only rotates left to right, so that's only going to give us access to a couple sides. Then we would have to rotate it, retouch it off, 
and end up having multiple setups. So that's not gonna be any good either. So I think the best thing to do here is design a fixture to where we can hold this part and access all sides and do this in one operation. So let's take a look at what solution we come up with to hold this part in our five axis mill. So as you can see, this is a simple square that's holding the part on this critical feature, which is this outside diameter. Well, since we have this ball sticking up, we have a slot and a pocket through our part that's gonna allow us to slide the part in through the top. Now, the last thing is how we're gonna secure this part in our fixture. Well, we're gonna utilize the threads that's in this part and run a bolt through the bottom of this and tighten the part inside the fixture. Next, we can just slide this fixture into our vise and hold it like we normally would and the part will be standing up. And that's gonna allow us access to all sides of the part. Now we don't have a lot of heavy machining on this, so this doesn't have to be something like steel or stainless or something like that. We're just gonna make it out of aluminum. Normally a big chamfer like this wouldn't be necessary, but I put this on here in case I need to access the back side of this part, and that's giving me a little bit of extra clearance. Now I wanna give you guys a quick disclaimer here. Normally I don't like to use threads or any other feature of the part in that nature, but we're not doing a lot of heavy machining on this. We've got very small cuts that we're gonna make. So I'm not really worried about damaging those threads. So that is the only reason why I'm gonna use them in this situation. Now, some of you may really think this is a lot of overkill for something like this, especially if you only have one part to make. But there's something that you need to understand when you're making complex parts or very expensive parts or parts that have a lot of machine work before it gets to your operation. And that's that safety and risk factor becomes a lot more important than shaving off a few seconds. So learning how to process parts based off its critical features becomes extremely important. Well, this may lead to a little bit more complex design in your fixture, but it's gonna really help you mitigate that risk and ultimately give you a better part. Because if you ended up scrapping something because you tried to save 10 seconds, it could cost you a lot of time going all the way back to the beginning and having to remake that part. Not to mention that learning how to mitigate risk like this will make you a lot more valuable. I know that when I was interviewing people for employment, I would always hand them one of the parts that I had made and ask them how would they process it. And based off their answer, let me know if they really knew what they were doing or if they just had a good looking resume. All right, let's check out our fixtures. All right, so even though that was a really quick operation, this actually came out pretty good. So now let's see how it fits on our part. All right, you can see that the angles are an exact match, so we're not getting any rocking. The V-block is also shorter than the part, so now we're not gonna have to worry about our vise clamping onto our part. And when we get this in the machine, we'll run an indicator across the top of that just to make sure that it is flat. All right, so I'm happy with that. That looks good, and when we're ready to machine our part, we'll be good to go. Now let's look at our other fixture. All right, again, this looks really good, so let's put our part in and see how it fits. All right, so first thing we see is it does slide in pretty easy. Now I did make this top bore a slip fit, so there's no wobble in it. So that's gonna locate the part really well. You also can see that I made the bottom face touch this bottom of the fixture. That way it locates off the bottom as well. All right, lastly, we're gonna put our bolt in. And I made this a counter bore, so that way this bolt goes all the way up in the bottom and our bottom of our fixture touches the bottom of the vise. Now I'm not gonna tighten that just yet. When we're ready to machine the part, we can go ahead and tighten it down. But that feels really good, it's really secure. Now if I had a bunch of these to make, I might design this a little bit more sustainable, but for what we gotta do, this is gonna work just fine. All right, so I hope you guys found some value in this video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see y'all next time.